In this video, we're going to have a look at how cues are used to do a breadth first search, and then we're going to look at the actual implementation details of how enqueuing and dequeuing elements works. Okay, on to the breadth first search example. So a breadth first search is an operation we can do on the graph to do a graph traversal. If you don't know what I mean when I say graph, I mean a network, not a bar graph or a line graph or anything like that. But first I should explain the breadth first search. In the breadth first search, the objective is to start at a node and traverse the entire graph. First by visiting all the neighbors of the starting node, and then visiting all the neighbors of the first node you visited, and then all the neighbors of the second node you visited, and so on and so forth expanding to all the neighbors as you go. So you can think of each iteration of the breadth first search as expanding the frontier from one node outwards at each iteration as you go on. So let's begin our breadth first search at node 0. So I'm going to label node 0 as yellow and put it in the frontier or the visiting group. And now, I'm going to visit all the neighbors of 0, being 1 and 9, and add those to the frontier. And then I'm going to visit all the neighbors of 1 and 9, being only 8. Similarly, for 8, so 7, then visit all the neighbors of 7. So I added a bunch of elements to my frontier. And now visit all the neighbors of the yellow nodes. And now we're done our breath first search because we no longer have any elements on frontier. Notice that there's 12 that is still unvisited because 12 is a loner node on an island all by itself, so we're not able to reach it via breath first search, which is fine. So suppose we wanted to actually code a breath first search, how would that be done? Well, the idea is to use a queue. So first, we add the starting node to our queue, and then we mark the starting node as visited. And while our queue is not empty, we pull an element from our queue, or dequeuing. And then for every neighbor of this node we just dequeued, if the neighbor has not been visited yet, mark the neighbor as visited and add it to the queue. So now we have a way of processing all the nodes in our graph in a breadth first search order. Really, really useful. A very, very popular graph traversal algorithm. So now let's look at implementation of queues. So let's begin with enqueuing. So it turns out that you can implement the queue abstract data type in multiple different ways. But the most popular methods are to either use arrays, singly linked lists, or doubly linked lists. If you're using an array, you have to make sure your array is going to be um, big enough. If it's a static array, if it's a dynamic array, then you'll be fine. But here I'm going to show you how to do it with a singly linked list, but in the source code we're using a doubly linked list, so stay tuned for that. In a singly linked list, we're going to have a head pointer and a tail pointer. So initially they're both null. But as we enqueue, we add, well, we just add the first node, so nothing really interesting is going on right now. But as we enqueue more elements, you can see that we're pushing the tail pointer forward, so we're adding a node and then getting the tail pointer to po point to the next node. Now dequeuing is a bit of the opposite. Instead of pushing the tail forward, we're going to be uh, pushing the head forward. So push the head forward one, and then the element that was left over was the one we wanted to dequeue and return to the user. So when we push the head pointer forward, we set the last node to null so that it can be picked up by the garbage collector if you're in Java. If you're in another programming language, which requires you to explicitly deallocate or free memory, 
yourself, like C or C++, now is the time to do that. So you see as we keep dequeuing, we're just pushing the head forward and forward again. And at the very end, if we add a bunch of elements and then remove them all, then the head and the tail again point to null, which is where we started. All right, now it's going to be time to look at some source code. I implemented a queue, so we can look at that in some details. Also, if you want the queue source code, that's in the next video. Have a look at the code repository I posted below. Uh, there should also be a link in the description. So guys, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.